Today let's look at actors in Swift uh, that are introduced in Swift 5.5 and Xcode 13. Till now we used semaphores, locks and serial queues for synchronization. But now after actors are introduced, we can use its declarative API to mark a class as an actor and the class will take care of the serialized access to its mutable state. Let's take a look at an example to see how you can use actors. We will create a temperature logger class uh, that will take temperature measurements and record them and also it will maintain a maximum temperature uh, in the class. Let's also make a function to print a welcome message from the logger. So in the Swift UI view, let's create a temperature logger instance and we will let's use that in the on appear function. At first, let's print out the welcome message. And then we will call the update function with a new temperature measurement. So before moving forward, let's make another function in our class temperature logger to actually print out the current measurements and the maximum temperature. Now let's call our print details function so we can print out the measurements and the maximum temperature. Now let's try to simulate uh, what would happen if we tried to call update and print details at, at the same time. So we'll, uh, we'll put our update function in the global async block 
so it could run in parallel with the print details function below that is running on the main queue while the update function runs on the global queue so let's think about what could go wrong here so what if uh, we are running the print details function and that function is not finished printing all the details and in between update function runs and changes the details so that could be a problem and indeed if you see on the console uh, we can see that we have only have one measurement 27 but the max value that is printed out is 29 so that means it was it got updated in between while the print function was running so let's put some breakpoints so we can see clearly what is going on So as you can see our print details function is hit and we print the measurements and then it goes to the update function updates the measurements and update the max value and when it comes to the print details again it prints the new max value so that's the synchronization problem that we have uh, because uh, our measurements were older and the max value uh, got printed after we updated the uh, measurements and the max value so we got inconsistent result max temperature cannot be 29 if we don't even have that measurement so this is where actors come into play now let's see how we can make use of actor to synchronize access to these functions so they are atomic so one function is called and it runs to completion and then only any other function can be called and using actors is as simple as replacing class keyword with a keyword actor and then all the functions and variables in the actor will be isolated and isolation just means that the function will run to completion before any other function can run in that actor now let's move to our content view and we can see we have some errors saying actor isolated instance method can only be referenced from inside the actor so this is because of how actors work internally actors maintain serial message queue and whenever you call a function on the actor you push that function to the message queue of the actor an actor dispatches the functions serially uh, to run to completion and because your function call is in the queue and can take some time to execute you have to use an await keyword uh, to wait for the call to finish so in a sense your call becomes an asynchronous call because of the message queue that is serially executed on the actor so let's add a wait keyword in all function calls and when we do that we cannot use on appear block on swift ui because that is a synchronous block instead we will use the task api that is asynchronous and newly introduced in ios 15 and mac os 12. and we can also not use dispatch queue apis in a asynchronous task so we will use the newly introduced async detached api that is similar and also there's some terminology change we call it global actor instead of global queue and the main actor when it's running on the main queue so now we have our actor and all the variables and functions are isolated and we are waiting for them um, let's run the code and let's see what happens as you can see now we get the measurements as 27 and the max temperature is 27 so this is a consistent result uh, that we would have expected now let's put some breakpoints and see what's happening as you can see our print details function is called and at the same time update function is called we the uh, print detail function is executed first and we print the measurements and the max value and once the print details function is finished then only the update function is called and it updates the measurements and the temperature max temperature value so as you can see even though the functions were called simultaneously uh, the execution happened one after another
because of that we got a consistent result uh, printed that says the measurement was 27 and the max temperature was 27. Now let's put our uh, print details function in the async detached block and see uh, what happens. As you can see, we, we get the consistent result again. This time we have two measurements, 27 and 29, and the max temperature is 29. So we are guaranteed to get consistent result because the functions are guaranteed to run one after another and not simultaneously. Now this is all good and as you can see actor isolated uh, the axis to its variables and functions so only one function or variable axis happens at one time. Take a look at this function print welcome. It's just printing a string and not accessing any of the variables of the actor so it's not touching measurements or max value. That means this function is not mutating any of the state uh, of the actor. So what we can do is we can mark this function as non-isolated so that when this function is called, this call does not block any other function. So we get improved performance. Now, if we go to our content view, we can see a warning here that says the await keyword is not needed anymore because it's not an async function because it's not isolated and it doesn't involve going through the actor's message queue that is serial. So it doesn't have to wait like it, this function can run in parallel with any other function of the actor. All right guys, so this was it for today's video. I hope this video was useful to you. And if you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button and let me know in the comments what do you think about actors in swift 5.5 and how would you use it for your projects and if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video Bye bye